Okay, so you get us a Kedesh number test, bottom of page 226. It's not a very long letter, not very complicated. We'll see if we can finish it in one go. Yeah, 37 minutes. Okay, again, the theme of this letter is about Tzedakah, and this time also, again, from a different perspective. Ahuvai achai vereyai ashekenafshi. My be- Ahuvai, my beloved ones, Achai, my brothers, Vereyai, my friends, Ashakenafshi, who are like my soul. In other words, precious to me and dear to me, like my own soul. Bosi Kemaskir, I come today over this letter. I come as a masker, as a reminder, um and an awakener. Right, I'm ready to, to be ready to awaken. So he is the awakener. He's the one that's causing the awakening. So he's the ma'ir. To awaken Yeshenim, those who are asleep, but Tiridemas heavily avolim. Those who are asleep, in what type of sleep? I'm not talking about literal sleep, but rather it's talking about those who are asleep in the heavily avolim, in the slumber of heavily avolim, to quote from Kahelis, the slumber of vanity of vanities. What are the vanity of vanities? Shlema Melch is talking about the materialism. Hevel Avolim. So the Altarim is saying that we can get so involved in Hevel Avolim, in all of the materialism, that we become asleep. We, asleep meaning we become totally disconnected, disaffected, and not impressed with anything that's important and significant. And the only thing we're involved in is in this Hevel Avolim, in the materialism. So I'm coming to wake you up. From this Hevel Avolim, he says, from the slumber that comes from Hevel Avolim. And to open up the eyes of the blind, as we'll soon see. Right? We get so caught up in the rat race, caught up in our material world and taking care of ourselves, that uh, we are asleep to other things. Or we become blind to other things and we don't see things the way we should be seeing them or see them at all. So the Altarab is saying, Get ready. I love you all very much, dearly, like my, na- my kenafshi, like my nefesh, but I'm going to try and say some words here that are going to awaken you from what you perceive to be your regular life, when really you're all fast asleep and your eyes are blind. Yabitu lirois, and here he's paraphrasing from, from the book of from the Novi Yeshayahu. Yabitu lirois, let them look to see. Yabitu let them look. Lira is to see. Liyeis kal yisham v'cheftzom u'magamosom that all of their uh, um, striving, longing, and desire and aiming, magamai is ambitions. Lokel bahem chaye rucham. In everything that wears everyone's ambitions and, and, and longings and aims, in everything on which the life of their spirit depends, that's where the ambitions should be. So I'm going to open your eyes and wake you up from your wake you up from your sleep and open your eyes so that Yabitu Lira is that you should be able to gaze and look to see that where should lie your ambitions and aims and goals. It should be in the life of your spirit. That's a paraphrase from the book of Yeshaya. And where should be the life of the spirit? The Mokar Mayim Chaim, the source of Mayim Chaim, of living water, of living waters, which is Chaye Chaim, the fountainhead of all life. In other words, the ambition should be with Abishta. And this should be kol yemechayem. This should be all the days of your lives. The Alter Rebbe always writes in the third party. Kol yemechayem. Min nefesh v'ad basar. From soul to flesh. Every part of our lives, the ambitions and goals and aims should be to the fountainhead of all life, mayim chayim, the water of life, which is the Ebishna. Now he's going to, let's bring it down. That was all very flowery language. Now let's bring it down into practical English. What do, what do I mean, says the Alter Rebbe? He didn't say it in English. But what do I mean? The Hainu, kol mili da alma. 
all matters of the world, all mundane matters, the iske panasa, and all of the involvement in panasa. All right, these are all important things. We live in the world, we're involved in the world, we're involved in earning a living. All of these things, lo yiyu, lo da avdin lagarmaya. We have to do these things. But the Alter Rebbe is going to tell us here how we should do these things. What should be our attitude towards these necessary things of being involved in the world and earning a living. So he tells us what it should not be before he tells us how it should be. It should not be loyia. It shouldn't be kilo da avdin legarmaya. It shouldn't be like those who do everything for their own sake. Meaning that they're only doing it for themselves, not doing it L'shem Shemayim for the sake of the Eivishter. The Avdin that they're working, Legarmayu for their own benefit. You have to work. But don't work because you need. That's not why he's going to soon tell us. You're not working because you need the money. You're not doing what you have, these things in this world. He says, Let not the house of Israel be like all the nations. In the, in the, in the, in the Tanya, it doesn't say Kachalagoyim, right? The original, here, here in, in many Tanis, you already have it fixed. But we know that there are some things that Alter Rebbe wrote, and then the censor changed it. So in some, in the older prints of the Tanya, it says, not to be like all the idol worshippers and the pagans. But originally, the Alter Rebbe wrote, what's the difference between a Jewish Parnosa, or ambition for Parnosa, and a non-Jewish ambition for Parnosa? The Zon and the Mephanesin, because they feed mefarnasin and give panosa sustain umoikrin and they have esteem lenishayu for their wives ubenayu and their children meava out of self love in other words Altenev is going to tell us over here why should I support my family why should you support your family because you love them that's not why you should be supporting your family he's going to tell us you should be supporting your family because it's a mitzvah that the Abish just said so why are you going to get a parnosa? Not because you love yourself, but because the Ebesha told you to make a parnosa. And with that, you should be able to support your family, you should be able to give tzedakah, you should be able to do everything that a yid is supposed to do. Unlike the motivation of the other nations of the world, that which is, it's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a crime, but the natural reason is survival. So for survival, people need to have food, clothing, and shelter. It's a very straightforward idea. Alter Rebbe is telling us a yid has a much greater and higher level of ambition than just to be able to achieve food, clothing, and shelter for himself or herself and for the family. So he's, that's what he's telling us. That our involvement of Mili Da Alma and Iske Panasa should not be the Avdin Ligarmaihu. It shouldn't be just for their own sake in order to find food, clothing, and shelter. Like that's the way the, the rest of the citizens of this planet do. They do it with me'ava. Meaning that since one loves oneself, he also loves his wife and his children because they're part of him. Alter Rebbe says, no, that shouldn't be the motivation of a yid. Rather, the love should be completely holy and selfless. It's only about the Ebeshter. It's not about me. It's about the Ebeshter. So the Alter Rebbe is introducing over here a whole new perspective on things because naturally we're looking for survival. The Alter Rebbe is saying that's true, but that's natural. You're a Yid, you have a Neshama. You have an addition to your Nefesh Hativis, your natural Nefesh. You have a Nefesh Elikis, as we learned earlier. So the Alter Rebbe is writing this to a, to, a, to a community that is aware that there's a Nefesh Elikis. And therefore the Alter Rebbe is saying that there's nothing which is outside of the parameters of the Nefesh Elikis. So even something which is normally considered, no one puts two thoughts about it, is a normal, natural, healthy thing, also has to be done and motivated by the Nefesh Elikis. Even something as basic as survival. There could be people whose their drive for survival is because it's natural. Or he's going to introduce to us, no, that our drive for survival has to be because of the Nefesh Elikis. So he starts off like this. Famous Pasuk. Who is like your nation, Yisrael? One nation in the Oretz and the earth, meaning unique. There is no other, because it is written, right? One unique nation, Oretz. 
What does that mean? The Hainu, this means Shigam bin Yoni Oretz. Apostle tell us we are unique, Ba'oretz. That we're unique in Shemayim, we know. There's a there's Nishamis. Well, what makes us unique over here in this in the Oretz? So he says, Dahan Shigam bin Yoni Oretz. That even in matters of Oretz, he's redefining the Pasuk here again, as he always does. The literal meaning is, who is like your nation? Israel was a unique nation on earth. Uh-huh. He's saying that it means more than that. That even in matters of earth, physical things, we're unique. Even when it comes to mundane, earthly matters, they will not separate from the one truth, which is Echad, Hashem Echad, Chas What does that mean? It's very possible, as we'll soon see, as we'll soon tell us. We daven, and we're davening, we're fully inspired. We say Shema, there's no reason to believe that someone who says Hashem Echad doesn't mean it. Hashem Echad, Hashem Echad, and he means it. The Ebishter is one, and there's nothing else other than the Ebishter, and he's the only Balabas in the seven heavens, and the four directions, and yeah, the whole thing of Echad. Very nice. But what happens when I leave shul, or I finish davening, and I go to work, or I get involved in the arets, in the in the earth, I get involved in the world, then it's possible that uh, it's a different echad now. <laughs> that echadness, that awareness of the Hashem echad, which I had in moments of inspiration, might not might not be there when I'm involved in arets in worldly things. So that's what he's talking about over here. This is what's unique. And what's unique about Yidin is that even when they're involved in Yoni Oretz, still lo yafridu mechad emes. They will still not separate from the Oretz, the earthiness, the material world will not separate from the echad emes, from the true echad chas v'shalom. Meaning, lahoid eidu sheker to bear false witness chas v'shalom. Bekrishma erva veke when saying Krishna evening and morning, beinayim sgures with closed eyes. Because what's the false witness? When I'm davening, I'm saying Hashem Echad, it means there's nothing else. Yet, when I'm going out in the world, I'm concerned, and I have to worry, and I have to, oh, maybe some people struggle with Shabbos, because how's the Parnassah going to come? One second, didn't you say Hashem Echad? So what are you worried about Shabbos? Some people struggle with whatever it is. He's going to tell us in the context of Tzedakah. I have to worry what I can give the Tzedakah. Maybe I have to worry about tomorrow. What happened to the Hashem Echad? So this is false testimony. With closed eyes. Why, right? <clears throat> As he defines, what do we mean when we say Hashem Echad? In the four directions. And in the heavens above. And in the earth below. Well, as the eyes of the blind are opened. The blind is that we're blinded by the materialism and physicality of the world. So when those people's eyes are opened, can you close your eyes upon him and he won't be there? Children do that. They close their eyes and you don't see me anymore. Right? Little children cover their eyes. Yeah, I'm hiding. You can't see me. So the it does not work with the Abish there, because you close your eyes, therefore in Enu. Therefore, the Abish is not there because you have a problem and your eyes are closed and you don't see a lakus around you. So that means in Enu. So we say Shema and we think and we give a testimony that Hashem Echad, that there is nothing else other than the Abish there. And Echad is one, Aleph, Ches, and Dalet, right? You're familiar with all the meditations. But then afterwards, that's when my eyes close. When I finish that moment of inspiration, that's when my eyes are closed, and therefore I don't say Ebishet anymore. So You're going to close your eyes, and therefore he's not there. So what should we do? How do we deal with this problem? The Altarab is telling us, this is the problem. This is what I'm coming to wake you up for. From. This is with this, with this approach, Yislanu will shall be befitting us. The what Lies call us The solution is that we have to train ourselves, and this doesn't happen overnight. But Dr. Rebbe is saying that we have to train ourselves that all call us that all of our involvement 
Bemili de Alma, that all of our involvement in matters of the world, in Gashmias, in material, physical matters, should not be Loyla Garmayu, should not be for its own sake. He's saying that's step number one. This is a genuine problem that people have. How do I take the inspiration of Echad, the genuine appreciation of Echad that I have when I say Krishna, when I'm davening, and how do I bring that into my practical day-to-day life on planet Earth, when I'm involved in the Earth, in, in the earthliness, in the earthiness, in the material, physical world? So he says the step number one is, Liyez Kola Sakene, that our entire involvement, in, that what should, how should be my involvement Bimili de Alma, to start with this, I have to start training myself that my involvement in Mili de Alma should not be Legamaya for its own sake. Rather, what should it be? Whatever my job may be. I'm not doing it for, the, for, that, for, the, for that, to earn a living, or whatever it is that I'm doing. Rather, Kim Lahachis Nefoshis. Rather, the reason I'm doing this, whatever it is that I'm doing, I'm doing it in order to give energy, to energize nefoshes, souls, to provide sustenance for souls. What are nefoshes? Portions of the Eibishter. And the Shama is a portion of the Eibishter. In other words, he's saying that the motivator should be not because I have to support my family, as he said earlier. That's what the rest of the world does. Even, he doesn't say it here, but as we know, even animals do that. Birds do that. That's not why we, that's, that's what makes Yidin different. We're unique. In the Oretz, in the same Oretz, in the same Arceus that the rest of the planet lives in, that all the other creatures live in, we're unique. How? That our Asarkeinu, our involvement in the world is not because we have to earn a living, but rather because I have to give energy to Nefoshis, to souls. What are the souls, as we know from the second paragraph of Tanya? Chelke Havaya, portions of the Eibishter. Ulamalis machsereyem bechesed chinom. To supply their machser, to supply that which they are chaser, which they are lacking. Bechesed chinom, out of gratuitous kindness. Chesed chinom, for free. Why am I supporting my kids? Why am I supporting my wife? Why am I supporting my husband? Why am I doing it? My kids haven't done anything to earn it. Who gives away money? Because chesed chinam. Because I'm supporting, I'm giving chayas to neshamas. He's not saying not to support your spouse, not to support your wife and children. Why are you supporting your wife and children? Because you love them. That's, that's, that's what every other creature in the world does. Obviously the problem there is that if one day if the love ends, then the person, if he, if, he has a, if he falls out with his wife or children, he won't support them, he won't give them anymore. After they were saying, no, the reason that we're supporting is because of the neshama, because of we're supporting the nefoshes, which are chelke leka, and lomales machsereim, to fulfill, the, to supply their machsa, that which they are lacking, bechesed chinam, out of chesed chinam, gratuitous kindness. She, because we're doing it that way, with that motivation, because in this way, we resemble the tzura to the yetzra. The form to the one who formed it. The form is the neshama. Le yetzra to the one who formed it, which is Hashem Echad. Because when we do it that way, with that motivation, we are doing it like the Abisha does it. Why does the Abisha sustain and support us? We haven't done anything to earn it. Why does the Abisha, the rain, right? It's raining today. Yeah? What's he doing all this for? We didn't do anything to earn it, but he's doing it out of chesed chinam. He wants the world to go and he supplies the world. So when we have that perspective that we are doing these things in order for chesed chinam, as he says of it specifically, to supply neshamis, which are portions of God, to supply them with mach which that which they are needed, which they are lacking. We are then medamin hatsudal yetzra. We resemble him who formed it. Which is, of course, Hashem Echod. Because the chesed of the Ebishter is kolayim is all day. It endures all day. That is chesed shalemes. It doesn't end. A true chesed is something that's without reward and is constant. The Ebishter who animates and, and energizes the world, and all that fills the world, meaning not just the world, means all of the universe, at every moment. So by imitating the Ebishter, 
we are giving kindness and energy, so to speak, to all of those things, it is my responsibility to give kindness and energy to. In this case, it's my wife and children. So it's a whole different... It's the, the, the bottom line is the same. I have to support my wife and children. As it tells us later, also the poor and so on. Then there's a hierarchy. The Abisha tells us who's your first obligations to, your first obligations to your immediate family. Then there's to the poor and so on. But the perspective and the way we arrive there is very, very different. Not because it is instinctive, not because that's the way of the world, not because I love them, but rather because that is what the Abishta wants. As he says now, it's only that according to the Torah, a man's wife and children are Kedmin. They take precedence, Lakel, to everything else. Al Piatera, according to the Torah, they take precedence over everything else. And that's why he's supporting his wife and, and children first. Except, he says an interesting thing over here. Um, this again, this is something that wasn't printed in the uh, uh, in the original version. Let me see if it's in the in the. And this is added on. The Al Tanabah had this written on in the early prints. It wasn't there. The only exception is that Sadikim of the generation, Shahin Kaden Levonov, they take precedence over one's children. Interesting. It doesn't say over one's wife, but over one's children. And then amongst the tzaddikim, the tzaddikim of Yisrael take precedence over the ones who are in Chutz Loretz and outside of Israel. Besides the fact, he says, that the ones in Eretz Yisrael didn't leave anyone in the diaspora comparable to them, and this is enough for, again, for the understanding person. The Altareb is saying over here, as he's going to soon finish up the letter, he's again, he's raising money for Eretz Yisrael. So this letter is telling us a very simple, straightforward idea. And that is, that what has to be our motivation when it comes to giving tzedakah? The motivation isn't, sorry, what has to be our motivation when earning a living? The motivation isn't survival for me. It's not to be able to survive, to help in the survival of my family. It's not to further my own career, to make a million dollars before the age of 30 or 40 or whatever it is. That may be the ambitions of the whole world. A yid works differently. And that is, he says, that's what the Pesach says, that when it comes to oretzness, when it comes to earthliness, a yid is different. Our motivation is something else completely. What is the motivation? Because the Ebishtet told us we have to earn a living. So I'm still a doctor, I'm still a lawyer, I'm still an accountant, whatever it is that the Jewish people do. But he's doing it not because he needs to earn a living. He's doing it because he needs to fulfill the Rotson of the Eibishter. The Rotson of the Eibishter is to be memalech Yisraelim, to fulfill that which is missing by other neshamis, which are portions of the Eibishter. The priority is one's wife and children, the Tater says that. But the motivation and the underlying uh, focus is because I'm doing what the Ebishter wants. Okay? It's a very straightforward idea, um, which the Alter Rebbe is telling us here in the letter, that we need to incorporate this in our lives, not to do things like Garmayu, he uses the word, not to do things simply to fulfill our own, to satisfy our own fulfillment. Or as they use the term today, it's not about us, it's about the Ebishter. It's not about me, it's not about you, it's about God. It's not about my wife, it's not about my children. It's not about the business, it's not about the money, it's about doing what Abishta wants. The Abishta said that I have to earn money. If the Abishta said I should I have to do something else, then I have to do something else. On Shabbos, the Abishta said that's a day when you're not going to earn money. You shouldn't be looking to earn money. So then I can't. Fine. The Abishta said that. Sunday he said I should, but I will. Monday is a yomtiv, I won't, <laughs> etc. Now is the time to daven, now is the time to learn. That means Abishta doesn't want me not to be busy earning money. So I have to take a break from that and now do what Abishta wants. It's not about me. It's about what Abishta wants. Then he says, <clears throat> so the hierarchy is, of course, first one's family. The exception to that, and this is for obvious reasons, the exception to that is the tzaddikim of the generation, he says, and specifically the tzaddikim of Eretz Yisrael before the tzaddikim outside of Eretz Yisrael. He's talking here about his mentor, Mendel Vitebsker again. Besides, he says, there is no one outside of Eretz Yisrael. They didn't leave anybody. That's right. He says, don't look at me. 
I don't come nowhere near to remember what Vitebsk is all to be saying in his humility. But even if there was someone outside of Eretz Yisrael, the first priority, even over family, is to give money to that tzaddik. The Daila Maven, he says, this is enough for the understanding person to be able to understand. And therefore, now comes the appeal. Right? Most of these letters, at the end, there's the appeal. Therefore, Therefore, my beloved ones, my brethren, direct your hearts, direct your hearts to these words that I've just written to you, and they've been written very short, right? The previous letters that we learned, the Altareb goes through longer and much more elaborate explanations. Here, the Altareb gave one interesting and short thought, explaining to us what should be our perspective and motivation in being involved in the audits in the world. She says, therefore, pay attention to these short words that I've told you. And when meets Hashem, he says, and meets Hashem, when we meet face to face at Daber Ban Barucha, then I'll be able to talk to you about these things at great length. Right? We'll sit together, have a fabring, and then I'll be able to elaborate on this short part, this little letter that I've just written. However, I'll start. Yeah. So. Pay attention to these short words. How the the main in these times. What are these times? In the times which are the approaching footsteps of Mashiach. So pay attention that the main Aveda in these times, and this is over 200 years ago. So we're all, now we're even more so in the Ikvis Meshicha than them. He says, Iker Avedas Hashem in these times is what? The Avedas Atzdoka. We spoke about this at length last week. Today, the main thing is Avedas Atzdoka, the service of Tzdoka. Aveda is the key word over here, not Tzdoka. Tzdoka, we understand what that means. And Tzdoka was always important. Now today we're saying here that the Aveda of Tzdoka the Aveda of Tzedakah means that Tzedakah is not just something that I do before davening and throw a few coins, but it has to become an Aveda. It has to become an integral and important part of our lives, the idea of Tzedakah. As our sages of blessed memory said, that Yisrael will not be redeemed with other than B'Tzedakah. Only through Tzedakah. V'lay Omer Razal, our sages did not say that Talmud Teira is shokul connected to Milos Chasadim. The, the Chazal, there's no place that it says that Talmud Teira is equivalent to Gmilas Chasadim. Right? We have the Elu Dvarim, we say every morning in Davening. And over there it gives a list of things that Talmud Teira can get Kulam, which means all the mitzvahs that are mentioned previously in that Mishnah. So he says, when they say that, sorry, I read that wrong. When they say that Talmud Teira is equivalent to Gmilas Chasadim, it doesn't mean that Talmud Torah is greater than Gemilus Chasadim. They, in general, rather they're talking about Elo B'yomehim. They were saying in their times. In other words, the words of this mission, I don't misunderstand it. Over there, it gives a list of things, and then it ends off, Talmud Torah Keneged Kulam, right? So he says, that which they say Talmud Torah is Keneged, it corresponds or is equal, equivalent to Gemilus Chasadim, doesn't apply today. Elo B'yomehim, this is only in their own days. Why? Because Shetalmud Teira he ikera aveda etzlam. Because Talmud Teira by then was ikera aveda. By then the ikera aveda was Talmud Teira, and therefore Valkein hoyu chachamim gedelim. That's why they were such great chachamim tanoim v'amiroim. Tanoim were the authors of the Mishnah, amiroim the authors of the Gemara. That's the way it was then. The main aveda, the main uh, task then, the main aveda was learning Talmud Teira. Mashaykin, because of the Mishikha, so the Altar is saying over here a very big statement. He's saying that that which is written in the Mishnah was time sensitive. And today things have changed. Today, he says, an Ikhus of Mishikha, Shinofla Sukhas David, with the Sukkah of David has fallen, Ad Prinas Raglaim, Vikvaim, up to the level of Raglaim of feet, and Akev, Vikvaim, the heels. She prinas asia, which in the Kabbalistic uh, hierarchy we have bria, atzilus bria, and asia, which is the lowest level, and the shechina, which is symbolized by the words referred to. But this is what he means when he says the sukkas david has fallen to the level of prinas asia. When the shechina has fallen to such a low level, ein derech ledovka there is no way of truly cleaving 
to her, to the Shekhinah, and to transform the darkness to light, the law of the world. There's no other way. Since the Shekhinah fell down to the world of Asiya, which means the world of action, the only way we can transform the darkness to light is with Asiya, with action. Talmud is not action. Talmud is in the mind, in the mouth. The only the mitzvah that's the action mitzvah, which is going to break this deadlock of Golas, which is going to pick up the Sukkas David from the Ikbayim from the hills. It needs to be Gamkin, needs to be something of action, which is what? Shehimaisa Tzdoka, the act of Tzdoka. So you'll say one second, <laughs> there's many mitzvahs which involve Asiya. There's many mitzvahs which involve action. Why Dafka the mitzvah of Tzdoka? As is known to the scholarly, that what is the level of Asiya when it comes to Alekus? The level of Asiya, of action in reference to Alekus, is when we talk about action, when it comes about, talk about action by the Abish there, it talks about what? Um, a downward flow of chayas, lamata mata. Ulaman the Leslie Megame Klum, even down to someone who has nothing of his own. That's what we talk about Asiya. Action, when it comes to Likus, Asiya, when it comes to Likus, is the downward flow of the Ibish, there's chayas, even down to somebody who has nothing of, of their own. So by giving tzedakah down here, the action of giving tzedakah is doing the same thing. Drawing down the energy, I worked hard, I invested energy, I worked from nine to five and I earned a certain amount of money per hour and I came out of my day with a certain sum of money. And from that energy, Dalton never told this to us earlier, when you give to Doki, you're giving him your own flesh and blood because you could have used this money to eat and sustain yourself. You expended flesh and blood to earn this money. You don't have this in other mitzvahs. Yes, the mitzvah of Lulav, you shake a Lulav, is an action mitzvah. But it's not an action mitzvah in the sense of drawing down and taking something and bringing it downwards, even to someone who doesn't have. There's only one mitzvah that does it. That's the mitzvah of tzedakah. We're able to take energy and draw it down, down even the the Leslie Megamiklu. And therefore, the Alter Rebbe uses an inter- interesting expression now. Obviously, we all know this is. <laughs> it's easier to shake a lulav. Tell me, I got to shake lulav. Tell me, I got to put on tefillin every day. It's still easier than giving tzedakah. This is the biggest challenge. The reason it's the biggest challenge is because that's what's most relevant and important and, and, uh, and will have the greatest impact today. And therefore, what do we need to do? We need to struggle with ourselves. Anyone who's able to slaughter his yetzer. In other words, I got to put my inclination to the side when it comes to tzbazeh, when it comes to tzedakah. My inclination is not to give, but to give a little bit. So it requires a lot of a lot of energy to be able to overcome my yetzer. So anyone who's zeveach is yitzre, zeveach is shech, who slaughters his yetzer in this area of tzedakah, who peseach yodu levove and opens up his hand and heart, you know what's going to be achieved. We're familiar with this from Bossi Legani. This is what the whole seventh generation is all about. Iskafia sitrachara, remember that? This is what it's all about. We will thereby cause iskafia sitrachra, the subjugation of the other side, which leads to ishapcha, umahapech hashecha le'er Hashem Yisbarach, which will then convert and transform the darkness into the air of the Eibishter, blessed be he, hashechen aleinu, who dwells in us, bebchinas asiya, in the level of asiya, as we said, beikus Mashiach, in these times of the footsteps of Mashiach, in the heels of Mashiach. So by breaking ourselves, and forcing ourselves to give more tzedakah than we're comfortable with. Slaughtering our yetzer, then we that is iskafia. And that iskafia will lead to his hapcha, to transform the darkness of the Shekhinah, which is with us here in Asiya, to be able to, to transform it from darkness and bring it to light, which we like we learned about at the end of the previous letter. And then the yiske lirais ayin ba'ayin, and then even more than that, we will he, the person, he or she, the person who is writing this letter to, who's going to take this letter to heart, and work on myself to do all of the above, to change my perspective on, on why I'm living in this world. It's not just about survival. It's not just about me. It's not just about the supplying survival to those who are resp- I'm responsible to. But rather, it's because to fulfill what Abishta wants, 
And then on top of that, to realize that today the main Aveda is Tzedakah because of the Shechina, the Sukkah's David, which has fallen down into the world of Asiyah, into the Ikbarim, into the hills. And that Tzedakah, more than any other mitzvah, symbolizes, and it is the act of drawing down from high down to very low. And therefore, by giving Tzedakah, that's what causes the Eibishter to do the same. Thus, I will be able to transform my Yitzhahara, my transform my inclination, not even a Yitzhahara, I'm able to transform my inclination, so too I'll be able to transform the darkness to light. The Yiske Liris Ayin Ba'ayin, he gives a bracha al over here, for Pasuk again from Yeshaya, you will merit to be able to witness Ayin Ba'ayin, eye for eye, B'Shuv Hashem Tzion, when the Ebishter returns to Zion to be able to have a front row seat and to be able to gaze and see and watch the Ebishter returning. Right? The queen is coming, the queen is coming to town and everyone's waiting online. Right? They want to be there in the front when the queen <laughs> is, is coming. Right? The people who come late are going to have to stand in the back. So the Altarev is saying, when we give tzedakah and we're able to change ourselves and, and be able to be skafi and hapra, then we get front row seats. B'Shuv Hashem Tzion. Maybe she returns to see it. Can I ask you a question, please? Sure. Yeah, I'm just wondering 